Good morning. Welcome to Worship with the Faith Community of North Christian Church in Columbus, Indiana, an open and affirming congregation of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. We welcome all as Christ has welcomed us. Today is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. If you have something in your home that will substitute for a palm branch, I encourage you to wave it during our songs, scripture, and whenever you feel so led throughout the service as a sign of peace, a sign of hope, a sign of faith. Speaking of Holy Week, Travis and I are providing six brief services for each day of Holy Week, Monday through Saturday on our church's YouTube channel. I encourage you to spend time each day this week participating in these services of music, art, drama, and scripture. Another free supplemental tool has been provided by the Christian Century Magazine to use for reflection and meditation during this week, and there will be a link at the bottom of the videos, as well as on the church website for you to access this resource. I hope that you will use it in your personal devotional time. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. We will celebrate the risen Christ with joy here on YouTube. We will also provide the opportunity to worship with our entire denomination, with our general minister and president preaching a celebratory sermon of new life and resurrection. Watch for the link for this special service of worship, uniting all of us as disciples, big D, and all of us as disciples, little d. You won't want to miss these opportunities for worship and celebration. We welcome your donations for the Easter special offering along with your regular tithes and offerings via check, ACH transfer from your bank, or through Givelify. We have a link to Givelify on our website, or you can download the app to your smartphone. The Easter offering supports the general ministries of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. I heard it said this week that we need to change our terminology in this time. Instead of social distancing, let's refer to it as physical distancing because we can and should still be social. That said, please plan to join us for our virtual coffee fellowship beginning at 11.30 a.m. on Sunday via Zoom for informal conversation and a way to check in with one another. Now, let us go to God in worship. As we enter this holy week, we will have the opportunity to reflect on our journey of faith with Christ. Remembering in the Garden of Eden, God planted the tree of life, and it is also on a tree that Christ is crucified. Today, we add a layer of wood to our gratitude jar. And we pray that we may have the strength found in Jesus to journey to the cross. Let us pray. Living, loving God, just as the assembled crowd did so long ago, we welcome you into our lives and into our world with shouts of Hosanna once more. Let us feel your presence with us as we journey through this holiest of holy weeks. We stand in need of the peace and hope you bring. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Our opening hymn for this Palm Sunday is Hosanna, Loud Hosanna. I'll play the introduction and then we'll sing three verses together.
Our scripture reading this morning is taken from the gospel according to John, the 12th chapter, verses 12 through 19. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the sovereign, the ruler of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. As it is written, do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your sovereign is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the sovereign, the ruler of Israel. Today is Palm Sunday. Wave your palms if you've got them. Wave your hands if you don't. Hosanna. Hosanna is a word that appears in numerous places in the Bible, especially the Psalms and the Gospels, and yet it is not translated into English. Neither is the word hallelujah. And I think over the centuries, we have had the tendency to assume that the two mean the same thing. We think of Hosanna as a word that means praise happiness, joy. Every movie that we've ever watched that includes a scene about Jesus's entry into Jerusalem shows a cheerful, exuberant, smiling crowd shouting, Hosanna, clearly interpreted as praise. But Hosanna is actually a plea for salvation. The original Hebrew means, save us. Those who greeted Jesus as he entered Jerusalem were literally saying, I beg you to save us, or please deliver us. Hosanna is a cry expressing an appeal for divine help. Knowing that, this great crowd that greets Jesus as he was arriving in Jerusalem, they are begging for salvation. They are begging for help. Picture in your mind's eye, not smiles and cheers, but people with expressions of pain and panic. Picture the crowd with fear in their eyes. Picture them as desperate for a savior and seeking redemption. Our scripture tells us that the crowd was aware of what Jesus had done for Lazarus. That is why they were drawn to him. They wanted salvation too. They needed a miracle in their lives also. They needed rescuing as well. The crowd assembled to welcome Jesus into Jerusalem because they shared the same need. Now, though the particulars of each person's story might have been vastly different from the next, they shared in common a need, a desire, Turn their lives around. They each 
wanted a new start. They each yearned for a mulligan, a do-over. So they gathered together. There are other times still today when individuals gather and form a great crowd to express a shared desperate need. A need for radical change, a need to turn the status quo on its head, a need for salvation. Each person in the crowd may have their own unique reasons for being there, but they share in common an anxious desire for change. They cry out in one voice, Hosanna, save us. Crowds may gather in rallies, protests, and vigils around issues such as caring for our shared environment, eliminating gun violence, allowing people, all people, to live their lives with dignity and integrity. Crowds might assemble for marches, walkouts and strikes to advocate for fair working conditions, an end to racism, or to protest unjust government policies that prey on the poorest and the most marginalized among us. Crowds might congregate to hear speeches, attend demonstrations, and elevate the common, challenge that, common challenges that are before us all. The crowd that greeted Jesus as he entered Jerusalem that was a crowd that was protesting. They were protesting unfair policies, unjust government, crooked, religious leadership, an oppressive way of life. Right now, in our nation and around the world, we have a common and desperate need. We share a universal enemy. We are all united as one in our fight to flatten the curve, to reduce the impact of the coronavirus, to save our neighbors from falling ill. We cannot face this foe alone. No individual response will do. And we cannot only be concerned with our own interests or our own needs. We must all come together as one great virtual crowd and work as one global community to defeat a common adversary, this virus. It is time to take action. In addition to staying at home and physical distancing, which is, by the way, the single most critical action step. In addition to that, we can sew masks and donate them to healthcare workers who are lacking the basic essentials and protective gear. We can advocate for an increase in the national minimum wage for our grocery store workers who are putting their lives at risk and also for improved access to health insurance coverage that's not linked to employment. And we can advocate for more opportunities for the poorest populations. We can assist the food insecure, house the homeless, and lift up the isolated, addicted, and alone. This virus has far-reaching implications that touch every manner of human being on this earth. 
long lasting consequences and expansive impacts on our future as a global society. And right now, it is exposing our weaknesses as a people. It is highlighting our failures to care for the least of these, to care for all our neighbors. If ever there was a time that we need salvation, this is it. Hosanna, save us. The great crowd in today's scripture text from John's gospel saw something in Jesus that gave them hope that things could be different. They saw potential. They saw possibility of an alternative reality. They had borne witness to the salvation Jesus had provided to Lazarus, and they believed that he could save them as well. Certainly, as they welcomed Jesus into Jerusalem, they also welcomed God into their lives. Coming together as a great virtual crowd to make an impact on this virus that is circumnavigating the globe shows us what is possible. When we, as individuals with our own diverse needs, band together to take on a challenge that impacts us all. We are working together to lessen the impact on people we've never met before. People in different countries, people who speak different languages, people who are very different and live very different lives than we do. We are uniting together knowing that the actions we take now to slow the spread will benefit someone, a great many someones, too numerous to know, calculate, or fathom. We are working together to be the best possible medical assistance we can possibly be, the kind that stand aside, care for ourselves at home, and give a wide berth for the medical experts to treat the critically ill. The crowd in our gospel text waved palm branches to welcome Jesus because in the ancient world, palms were symbols of victory and triumph, to be sure. But palms were also symbols of peace and eternal life. Perhaps the crowd was acknowledging the peace that Jesus was bringing and still brings into the world. As we welcome Jesus into our homes and into our lives once more this Palm Sunday, let us work and pray for hope when all seems hopeless. Peace beyond understanding, solidarity and companionship, love beyond measure, and life beyond death. Amen. So this week, as I've mentioned, is Holy Week. And during Holy Week, we commemorate the very first time that Jesus celebrated the Lord's Supper with his disciples in the upper room. The services that Travis and I are preparing for your Holy Week will give you a glimpse into the personalities that were there during that time. And I hope that you will participate in those on YouTube. But we remember every Sunday and every opportunity that we worship together that special evening with Jesus and his disciples. 
we remember when we gather around the table and we take bread and we bless it, and we break it, and we pass it, and we say, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. In a similar way, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, this is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood for forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. Beautiful, Travis, thank you so much. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, I have a number of prayer concerns I'd like to lift up. 
One is for those living with the reality of food insecurity. This is a problem ongoing throughout the year, but is especially prevalent now. There is a great, tremendous increase in the number of folks who are needing uh, assistance with food and other basic essentials. So we pray for those and offer our, from our bounty to those who need it. We also pray for the farmers who are among those essential workers who are working very hard to prepare their fields and plant their crops and prepare to refill the grocery store shelves when the time comes. They are doing their part to save us all, and we are grateful. We pray for persons living in Yemen and Libya where air raids and shelling continue. We pray that leadership is exhibited to reduce the spread and lower the risk of the virus. We pray for the medical personnel who knowingly put their lives at risk every day. And we pray for the grocery store workers who didn't sign up for this, but are in the line of fire, many at minimum wage with no health insurance. We pray for all of us who in the coming weeks will hear numbers that are skyrocketing day after day as testing becomes more widely available. Please don't panic. This um, is a result of the increased number of tests. It is not meant to imply that the virus is raging out of control. So please stay calm and uh, reach out if you find yourselves in a situation where you're anxious and are very concerned. Reach out to myself, to your elders, to your friends, to your family. There are resources available that we can put you in contact with as well. Before we go to God in prayer this morning, I invite you to participate with me in a breath prayer. As we breathe in, we pray, we are many. As we breathe out, we pray, we are one. Breathe in, we are many. Breathe out, we are one. Breathe in, we are many. Breathe out, we are one. Breathe in, we are many. Breathe out, we are one. Gracious God, on this Palm Sunday, we welcome you into our homes and into our lives. We seek your presence and your comfort in these challenging times. As we enter into Holy Week, center us on the journey toward the cross. As we experience the sights and sounds of Christ's final week on earth, May we remember that we too must sacrifice for the sake of love for others. May our doubts, our pain, our own troubles, our grief never prevent us from following you. Give us courage for our days, courage for this week. Courage to be new people in you. We look forward to the resurrection as we pray together. Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is All Glory, Laud, and Honor. I'll play an introduction and then we'll sing three verses together. Loving God, guide our steps, encourage our hearts, give us abundant faith to follow you. Amen.
Go in peace. Have a great week. Take care. Blessings.